Okay, episode 12. Uh, as you may have noticed, I've got my microphone very close to my mouth, uh, so hopefully this will actually help solve some of the problems with volume uh, before Josh gets the chance to come help me set this thing up more formally. Uh, maybe I'll go this way so you can actually see how cool the microphone is. Um, all right, so episode 12, uh, I thought what I would do today is tackle the very fun and useful concept of uh, phase space. Um, this concept was actually referenced in uh, the episode around the Kinevin framework, and at the end of this, uh, I'll, I'll loop back and, and uh, connect it back to the Kinevin framework, but right now I'll just do phase space on its own. So, um, phase space, let's, let's take as our model a bicycle. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a handle on how to model the relevant information uh, that describes some kind of system. So in the case of a bicycle, uh, we have about five fundamental uh, degrees of freedom. We've got the the position of the back wheel, we've got the position of the chain, we've got the pedals, we've got the front wheel, and we've got the, the handlebars. Um, and you know, absent, for example, trying to do things like uh, position the bike itself in XYZ space uh, and T time, and maybe position the entire orientation of the bike in that time, in that space, as sort of handle four more dimensions. Um, we've pretty much done it, right? So you've got either five dimensions to get the, the space of the state of all those characteristics, um, or uh, seven more dimensions if you want to really map this thing close. Let's just stick with the five. So now what we do is we say, okay, the degrees of freedom in each of the dimensions. Well, nicely enough, the, the back wheel, uh, the chain, the pedals, and the front wheel um, are all uh, just described by circles, right? They, they, they go around and they repeat the same thing. So they're just a they're uh, a model that describes them, say, 360 degrees. Um, you can identify where they are at any point in time and done. So you've got a variable that describes the, the back wheel in terms of where it is in, in its rotation around 360 degrees in the chain and the pedal and the front wheel. Um, now, of course, the front wheel also has the ability to have a, a separate dimensional behavior. Right? It, can, it can turn. Um, and, of course, the pedal, the, the handlebars do as well. So now what we have to do is we have to add uh, another dimension for the orientation of the front wheel and, and, and the same dimension for the orientation of the handlebars. So let's say it's a 45 degree rotation. So now with this set of dimensions and these set of characteristics, uh, we have the ability to, to actually fully describe uh, the state of the bicycle at any point in time. Um, so I can take a, a, a spot and I can say, okay, given the state, so where uh, around 360 degrees is the back wheel, the chain, the pedal, the front wheel, where in the 45 degree arc is the, is the front wheel and the uh, handlebars, and that there will be one point that is the unity or this, the value of all of those different uh, dimensions. And uh, that's going to be the state of the bicycle at a point in time. And then as I move forward in time, uh, what I see is that that point will move. Right? So basically what will end up happening is that the, the, the value of the 360 degrees for the back wheel will continue to go as I'm pedaling. It will go around in a circle. And so on that particular dimension, what I'll describe as what effect will be a circle, or the, the value will go from 0 to 360 and then return back to 0. Um, and of course, this will happen across the entire system. And so what I'll see is I'll have what's called a, a traverse through phase space. So phase space is what describes, uh, as a word that it describes the, uh, the various dimensions that we're using. Um, and uh, the traverse is what, what happens as you drive a particular um, point through phase space. So as you ride the bike, you're going to be seeing changes in all the various variables, and whatever those changes show up as is, is the point. And when you do that uh, with a normal bicycle, you'll notice um, a number of things. We notice two things in particular. One is that you will notice that the back wheel, the uh, chain, and the pedals seem to be entrained, which is to say that there is some strict correlation if it's a simple bicycle, a very strict correlation between their states. So that as the state in the back wheel changes, the state in the chain, chain changes, and the state in the pedals change, um, and in some fixed ratio. Uh, so in some sense, they are uh, the same, uh, and they are entrained. Um, most likely, you will notice that there is uh, more of a correlation uh, between the state of the front wheel and the back wheel, meaning that because they are not deeply, deeply causally connected, uh, although they are somewhat causally connected uh, by the fact that they're both on the ground and they're both connected by the chassis, um, you'll see that there is a, a high quality relationship between the state of the front wheel and the back wheel, uh, but it may not be as tight as the relationship between, say, the pedals and the back wheel. Um, but what you will see is that there is a tight entrainment between the handlebars and the front wheel. 
And um, you know, when you turn the handlebars one degree to the left, the front wheel also turns one degree to the left if you've got a well-functioning bike. Um, okay, so that's that's it. Like that's the concept. So so now let's take this and, and be a little bit more robust. So try to imagine constructing a phase space to describe, say, a horse. Um, well, you're gonna, going to notice, I think, two things. The first is that it's an enormously larger phase space because we're dealing with something which is um, has vastly more degrees of freedom. So we're not just talking about, say, the the state of each of the legs and the head and the tail. We might also have to model, for example, the state of the blood pressure and the uh, circulation of uh, the pumping of the heart or the dilation of the eye, of the nostrils. And the total number of possible states that are necessary to describe a horse is uh, qualitatively enormous. Um, now, of course, we can decide to do a sampling. Say, so, we're just going to model, uh, say, the positions of the legs um, and uh, be done with it. Like, simplify the model a lot. And that's a very useful thing to do. But the first observation is that you're dealing with something like an evolved organism. Um, you're dealing with just an enormous amount of uh, face space in comparison to a designed object like a bicycle. The second thing that you'll notice um, is that, well, you may not notice it, but so I'll just tell you, is that the phase space of a bicycle is finite and bounded, which is to say that um, so long as it is still a bicycle, the dimensions that I just described is what they are, and the, the variables that they can, they can take aren't changing. Uh, so you're not uh, having 361 degrees suddenly emerging in your bicycle wheel. It's just 360 degrees, and that's all it is. Uh, by contrast, in the horse, the phase space is in fact not bounded, meaning that in time, in relationship to its environment, the horse can actually change the shape of its phase space. A new kinds of possible uh, variables can emerge inside certain dimensionalities. Let's say, for example, the horse um, uh, changes its gait in response to the environment that it's in. And uh, this emerges as something that has never happened before in that particular horse or in horses in general. Um, this is all possible. Like horses have that capacity. Um, and in fact, in principle, one can actually imagine the emergence of entirely new degrees of freedom, entirely new dimensionalities. Um, obviously, in the, in the situation of evolution, we see this happen all the time. Like the, the emergence of uh, light sensitive cells um, is entirely novel. Like it didn't exist and then it did, and so it created an entirely new uh, portion of phase space, not just the value, values that it can uh, handle. Um, and so the idea here is that, uh, now we're connecting back to the Ganevin framework, a, a complicated system is a system that has a finite and bounded phase space. So, you know, bicycles uh, and airplanes. Um, a complex system is a system that does not, that it has an unbounded phase space. And uh, I think that's, that's pretty much it. So with this new concept, we're going to be able to do other stuff in the future. Um, but for now, uh, I think that's all we have to do.